Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Al Kaf country, traveling Turkey. Today's episode, let's discuss Islamic Turkey. Turkey is the eighth largest country in the world in terms of population of Muslims. Now, the Muslims, although this is a secular republic, the Republic of Turkey, it has a long Islamic history going back to the, the very early days of the Rashidun. There are former Rashidun holdings here in Turkey, in southeast Turkey, in Balad Asham. You will also find um, that to this day, there are many serious practitioners of Islam. Um, and then people who are just cultural Muslims where they, they will um, fast at Ramadan, they will pray. Um, sometimes, they, uh, sometimes they will be a bit more lax, but then others are very serious about their prayers and pray five times a day. They, they maintain as many sunnahs as possible. Um, and they're very serious about their Islam. They tend to practice within the Hanafi school of fiqh. Um, and they tend to be maturidis in terms of their, the, uh, their theology, in terms of their kalam. Uh, there are many people with a Sufi background and there are many Sufi orders that have been strong in Turkey to this day, although it is, it is uh, kind of a bit more under the surface um, because of legalities. But among the Sufi orders that you will find in Turkey historically, you will find a strong pottery influence, especially in Balad Asham. You will find at the um, at the Shey Mus um, uh, Turbe, which is located in southeast Turkey. You will find a strong pottery influence there. A number of, those were some of the the main disciples of um, Sheikh uh, Jelani uh, Al, uh, Al, Al Kader. Um, and I, I apologize if I mispronounce any names, but he was, uh, Shea Moose was one of his, his main disciples from my understanding. And I visited that location last year and it is very, it's a very amazing place energetically. I would highly recommend visiting there if you travel to Balad Asham. Another, uh, so Balad Asham is very, very important to Islamic history and to Islamic eschatology. And uh, so I'll continue on with the Sufis. In that area, you also find one of the two main purported tombs of Bayezid Bastami, who's very important to Islamic history and to Sufi history. Um, the other turbe, turbe and Makam or, or Mazar that's associated with him is in Chittagong in Bangladesh. Um, but the one here, I've been to a couple times and it's, it's a very interesting place to pray. Um, and to make vicar, and it's in a beautiful location. I found it by accident as I was traveling around to places of the prophets, peace be upon all of them, because many of the prophets lived in the in Upper Mesopotamia, in Balad Asham, um, and we'll discuss that in a few minutes, but um, as far as the Sufis, we also don't want to neglect the Naqshbandis have historically been very strong here. Um, and you will also find uh, besides the Naqshbandis and the Qadariya, the Rafai, uh, Surawardiya, um, you will find the um, Bektashis and uh, their, their Shia cousins, the Alevis, um, which, which have many, they're found in many pockets across Turkey, especially in the east. Um, and they have, the, they're the strongest uh, Shia um, group in, in Turkey, as far as I'm aware. There aren't a lot of Twelvers here. Um, but you will find a lot of Alevis and you will find Bektashis in the area which have a Shia influence um, but are Sunni typically as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong about this. Please please uh, include information in the comments if you're aware of something different from this. I'm still learning as much as I can. I'm fascinated by all of Islamic history and by all of the prophetic tradition in all of its different expressions across space and time. You will also find um, the Mevlevis are very strong. You could go to Konya and you will find the, uh, the turbes and tombs of, uh, of Jalaluddin Rumi and his son and father are located there and many of the great Khorasani Shiuk. Um, you will also find in that same town nearby uh, the grave of Shamsuddin, Shams of Tabriz, 
who was the teacher and friend and enlightener of Rumi, um, for his, uh, the closest disciple of, of Rumi's father, I believe his name was uh, Sheikh Burhan, I could be wrong about this, he is buried in Kayseri on the other side of Cappadocia. Um, and he was the primary teacher of Rumi after his father. So his main teachers would have been his father and then Sheikh Burhan, the chief disciple of Rumi's father, and then it would have been Shamsuddin. Um, and then of course there's the lineage beyond that, um, which that we'll discuss that in another video. In Cappadocia, which is an amazing place for Christian history and Christian monasticism, you will also find um, you will find the, the, uh, uh, an Islamic center, a Sufi center associated with Haji Bektash, uh, who's considered to be the founder of the Bektashi order. He as well is a Khorasani. Many of the great Sufis in the Sufi orders are literally founded by or deeply influenced by Khorasani traditions and Khorasani Shiuk and Khorasani scholars. Um, so we could actually argue that another, like that the Sufi tradition is to a great extent a Khorasani tradition. Um, and that they, they uh, picked up and learned from the Sahabis who transferred many, uh, much of the spiritual lineage and energy from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, and onward. And then the Khorasanis took it to, uh, basically cultivated and came to, cultivated the tradition and came to tremendous insight and, and, and we're very practical, very practical insight, I should say. So anyway, there are so many Sufi orders present here, the Helvati Jirahi orders, um, and uh, influences from the Yas Yasawi tradition from Central Asia through the Naqshbandis. So you've got the Kawati and the Kubrawiya through the, through the Naqshbandis. So many different Central Asian orders that have Khorasani influences. So I will go ahead and make a part two of Islamic Turkey because there's much more to discuss but these I just wanted to introduce some basics um, so those are that this is a quick little intro so let's let's go into another episode to discuss a little bit more inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh